oral community. Now it says it's recording. Okay. I was able to get it set up on a different computer, so we're fine. Thank you. That makes me feel more secure. <laughs> okay. Um, this is the time for oral communications from members of the public um, on topics that are not on tonight's agenda, but are within the purview of uh, the district. And it, would anybody like to um, address uh, the board? It looks like Alina has her hand up. So uh, let's allow her to speak. Alina Lang. There we go. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Hi, um, I just wanted to bring up my concerns about the Fall Creek uh, fish ladder to the board. A year and a half ago on the environmental committee, I advised that when constructing the fish ladder, we take into consideration lampway passage. And the message I received at that time, or at least the way that I understood it, was yes, that was the plan. Um, when I touched base again on it, when that topic came up at a recent committee meeting, I learned that was actually not the case at all. And now I'm being told that it's too late to do anything. And I still disagree that it's too late to do anything because my understanding from, if I'm understanding the drawings correctly, I'm not an engineer, but it, the weirs are gonna be poured of cement. And all I'm proposing is that we not pour it in such a manner that creates sharp 90 degree angles that the lampreys lose suction on. And I also just wanna highlight why it's so important that we have biologists contributing on these types of things, uh, because if they had input on this type of project, we could have ended up you know, with a more inclusive fish ladder that wouldn't have cost the district any money and would have been more beneficial to our public and the community and the fisheries um, around. So that, that's all I had to say, thank you. Okay, um, Rick, did you have a, a quick response to that? I don't believe there is a quick response. Uh, we have discussed <laughs> this internally and we have discussed with our design engineers. Carly, do you have a quick response? Carly has been communicating uh, on this issue. Yeah, I think Rick, um, like you said, there's not necessarily a quick response. I think we are planning to touch more on this, Alina, um, at our next engineering and environmental committee meeting. We're going to discuss the Fall Creek Fish Ladder Project and we'll probably go into this quite a bit more. Um, I do have some updates for you as well, so maybe we can touch base um, separately. But okay, I, I just have a really simple question: Have when they've done the surveys, have they found lamprey in Fall Creek? Yes. Yeah, that's that's uh, interesting. So they actually just did some of the fish relocation uh, at the start of the project, and they did find lamprey in the ladder. So Alina, that's something that we can talk about. Um, but yeah, so they okay. they are present and they are able to get over the ladder at its current configuration um because we are seeing them above it but yeah oh, that's good okay okay thank you um, jamie did you have a quick question yeah quickly i just wanted to know when we might um when the fish ladder might be coming back to the board for an update just so that you know the rest of us who are not on the environmental and engineering committee can hear more about what the answer is or perhaps maybe there's going to be a written update or um, response to this but I, I'm curious to know, um, you know, what the longer answer is when it's available. Okay, I was planning to give a, just a very short on the fish ladder itself uh, in the manager's report tonight, but not on that particular subject. Um, but yes, we will get back to you on that. Okay, so maybe in a subsequent district manager's report, we can hear about that, but he's not prepared to do it tonight. So let's, let's move on. Um, thank you, Alina. Um, there is no president's report, so we will move on to um, uh, unfinished business, which is the remote meeting authorization um, under AB 381. Um, and so I. <laughs> Can I get a motion? Excuse me. There's somebody right outside my window with a blower. I will move uh, the uh, recommendation uh, to, uh, I'm sorry, I'm just pulling it up right now. The resolution. I'm sorry, I will move the uh, resolution to proclaim an ongoing state of local emergency and authorize, authorize remote meetings for another 30 days during the COVID-19 pandemic. I'll second. Second. Okay, Holly, would you take a vote, please? Chair Mayhood, could we get... A there may not be any public comment, but I just yeah. uh, oh, we make right. sure. Is there any public comment um, on this uh, motion? 
I don't see any, but I do see Bob Fultz has his hand up, so. Uh, just a quick question. Um, do we have any sense of how much longer this will be allowed? Gina, did you want to address that? Um, I don't have a, a sense. I believe the law allows it potentially to continue through the end of 2023. Um, I don't have any other update except to say that um, it could change at any time. The, the governor could withdraw the proclamation of statewide state of emergency, which would uh, undermine the findings for the resolution and we wouldn't be able to continue to do this. Okay. Any Thank other you. discussion of the resolution? Uh, then if not, and I don't see any hands up in the public, so go ahead, Holly, would you take a roll call vote, please? President Mayhood. Aye. Vice President Ackerman. Yes. Director Fulz. Yes. Director Hill. Yes. Director Smalley. Yes. Okay. It passes. So we go to our uh, first item of new business, which is the cross country pipeline construction peer review proposal. Um, Rick? Chair Mayhood, uh, the district engineer, uh, Josh Wolf, will, will present uh, this item, and the environmental planner and myself may chime in. Uh, Josh? Thanks, Rick. Uh, good evening, everyone. This item is a request that the board authorize a peer review of the previously accepted cross-country pipeline constructability study that was completed by Freyer and Loretta. In the engineering committee and in individual discussions within the district, we have determined that peer review of that report, of that study, is necessary prior to engaging in any kind of project of that scope. This is that peer review. We have approached specifically John Kasunich, who with the aid of Mark Fox and Tim Best are, well, they're the best around when it comes to geotechnical and geological work within the San Lorenzo Valley and specifically on Ben Lomond Mountain. John Kasunich, for example, was the geotech on the original construction of the cross-country pipelines. So there's nobody out there better suited to review the constructability report, the study, and to provide a professional opinion on well, on its well, on the report. And I will cheerfully take questions. Rick, did you want to add anything or should we go? Well, part, part of the request tonight um, is the board to also waive formal bidding procedures. Um, staff did go out and seek uh, Harold Kasunich consulting firm out because we wanted these three individuals to perform this peer review as these are the experts in the field in Santa Cruz County for the Ben Lomond Mountain. Um, so we did not uh, perform uh, the normal formal bidding. Um, so we're asking the board also as part of tonight to approve the waiver of formal bidding procedures uh, and to award. Okay. Uh, Jamie, would you like to start with any questions? Well, actually, I'm, I, it sounds like there has been some conversation about this at the Environmental um, and, and Engineering Committee, and, um, you know, there was a reference to one-on-one -on -one conversation. So I'd really like to hear more about what those conversations were before I comment. So perhaps um, Mark or Bob can share what the discussion was at that level. Uh Mark, did you want to comment on that or? Certainly. Um, the Engineering and Environmental Committee did discuss the aspects of a peer review and concurred that, yes, we should do that. However, um, we did not review this proposal from um, HKA um, at the committee level. 
So this is the first time that um, I'm seeing it, Bob is seeing it also, um, and the rest at the same time as the rest of the board. So um, with that, did I address your question, Jamie? You did. Sorry, there was a person coming into the room behind me and asking me questions that I was trying to wave off. But yes, um, you did. So I, I okay. wasn't. I was feeling like I, I, you know, this, this um, right. was a new to me that we were seeking this peer review, and I, I didn't know if it had been an ongoing discussion um, at the committee level. So um, I guess I, 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 I appreciate the, um, you know, extra caution of, of seeking a peer review to confirm um, the uh, project proposal and estimates that we were given. And I'm just um, wondering, uh, you know, how this dovetails with our other discussions around, you know, the, the you know, public outreach communications um, and engaging with the community on this issue that we've talked about. Yeah, Jamie, as part of the, the peer review, there will be two presentations. Uh, on the peer review, one will be at the engineering uh, committee uh, from Harold Cassinich and Associates, and then the second will be a uh, presentation to the full board at a uh, at a board meeting, public meeting. So there will be uh, a, two presentations to the, uh, on their findings of the peer review. And I think we also talked about moving ahead with peer review when the full board reviewed the. Uh, constructability study as what would be our next steps. Um, and so we're, we are moving, we're trying to move, uh, you know, relatively quickly um, so we can hopefully get the peer review done and then move straight into the environmental process, whether we do an environmental peer review, depending on what peer review of construction um, looks like, and so we can start the EIR process you know, once the board determines the project. Could I just, um, Chair Mayhood, ask a follow-up question? Go ahead. Um, so I, I understand that this is part of the process that we identified as a board, but I'm, I guess I was feeling like I um, wanted to make sure I understood the phasing of this process because I was also under the impression that we were going to be like pretty quickly, you know, moving towards having those, you know, more public dialogues about what um, the, the, the project entails. And so... In terms of the the timeline for this, are we are we expecting that we'll go through this peer review process into the looks like fall, um, and then then after that we'll be looking at having some public meetings around discussions about the process, or is that going to be further into the environmental process? Um, and and I just assumed that it was going to be more quickly that we would get to that phase of the discussion. To, to, the short answer to answer your question would be yes. As soon as the peer review is completed, uh, we would move ahead into a more public process. I think Mark wants to uh, comment. Go ahead, Mark. Yes, to address that public review aspects, um, we currently have uh, what I feel are fairly well-defined cost estimate for the alternative number 3B which is bury HDPE pipe in the ground. Um, in discussions with Rick and other staff, we're contemplating more along the lines of what Josh has outlined in the memo and identified as a middle ground option, which is a very narrow bench, um, still some buried pipe, where we can in other places, a uh, covering pipe. But what we don't have are any kind of cost ranges for that middle ground option. Right now, the only cost that we have to be able to put out in front of the public is this $60 million number or slightly less than that uh, based on what we have from uh, Frere and Loretta. So this is part of what the peer review is seeking, is for us to be able to have a, a more defined, not only scope, but also cost that we can discuss sort of two ends of the spectrum with the public on. Rick, did I capture? Yes, I, yeah, thank you. Uh, I think you did, because right now too, when we have to roll out to the public, 
would be the the 62 or 60 million dollar project which is it it is a, a considerable you know large project and hopefully that project can be scaled back and when we roll it out we don't have this uh, sticker shock on price and we don't have this environmental issues when we roll it out um, so we're we still don't have the the, the final project to find. And I think after the peer review, uh, I think the board will be able to be comfortable on selecting uh, and working with staff and the engineering committee on selecting, you know, a project to move ahead. And then, you know, we roll out, uh, hopefully we have our new uh, outreach team uh, uh, on contract and we roll out a, a series of meetings uh, workshops with the general public and the board to educate what we're doing moving forward. Uh, Jeff, did you have a follow-up? So before Mark spoke, I was going to address basically the same issue that this so looking at uh, the hybrid Part, part buried and part on the surface, uh, which I think is an excellent Jeff, idea. You're, you're cutting out uh, a little I also, bit. Oh, well, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I also think this you is might, valuable. You might want to just shut off your, your video for a second so that maybe it, if you've got a bandwidth, it's, if you, at least we can hear you. Let's see if I can do that here. Yeah, we're not uh, hearing not video. Okay. Is this any better? Well, keep talking and we'll find out. <laughs> okay. So in addition to ag agreeing with Mark on that, I think that whatever price we come up with is going to be some degree of sticker shock. And if we have a second set of eyes look at this and say, yes, indeed, the first numbers were, were not that far off, or they say, well, the first numbers were too high and we think this is a much more realistic price. We're much better off going to the public with two opinions to give us a range of, of uh, costs there than we are to go with one very high price cost that's absolutely going to give us sticker shock. I mean, it gave all of us sticker shock, so I would expect it would give everyone else that sort of thing. I guess I, I would just like to follow up and say that when I, I read the uh, memo that Josh wrote uh, along with this, it strikes me that th this is not a request for peer review of the previous study um, in the sense that it strikes me that what that the decision has largely been made. We haven't maybe voted on it, but there's a lot of consensus um, about our concerns about the environmental aspects of a 18 foot bench. There's the cost, there's the concerns about, uh, Rick worries about torrential rain. I worry about triggering landslides. So I, I guess what I wanna make sure is that we're not spending $60,000 um, and what we're really looking for here is not a peer review of what the previous people did, but a basically a careful assessment of um, the alternative that we sounds like everybody's kind of coming toward. And so if somebody could address that for me, why we're calling it peer review, is this because we ex this is what FEMA expects or um, be because it sounds like not only have we made our mind, but sounds like uh, so have these consultants. So it doesn't strike me as a peer review of a previous study. Well, I'll start and then I'll ask Josh to kick in. I, I think we are, I, I believe we are asking for peer review of the FNL constructability report. But I think the, those consultants as looking, and, and they were, uh, they, this wasn't the first time they looked at um, the constructability of this project. Uh, they looked at it way back when we first went out for the RFP on constructability. They were reviewing it, um, but they're they're looking at that project and they're trying to come back with a I think a scaled back project as part of their peer review. We won't know what they're going to propose and, until we we uh, see their report. And I 
you know, from working with those folks and from them working in the Ben Lomond Mountain, you know, I think that they're looking for a, a, a more, a lesser footprint than the, the 14 foot or the 12 foot uh, pipe bench or the amount of trees. I think they're looking for something as the pipe was done originally, but also following uh, what FNL put out, you know, of, of either bearing or covering the pipeline. So I, I think we need to give uh, Kasunich uh, a chance to do the peer review, but I think they're definitely going to have uh, some some thoughts on on how to move this project forward and i'll, I'll ask josh because he actually met with uh the group all right so we're actually looking for or requesting here what i think of as peer review plus we are looking for a traditional peer review in that we would like to have an additional set of professional eyes look at FNL's methodologies, FNL sources, and FNL's conclusions. That said, we are quite happy. We as staff are happy with the FNL study, but we feel like there's on a project this scope, there's a need to review that. So this is the peer review portion. The remainder, the the uh, middle ground option, as I described it came organically out of the conversations that I had with specifically Mark Fox and John Kasunich when we were discussing the peer review and the project and the idea of this kind of middle ground option, which is a, very similar to some things that, had, that staff had been batting around initially, but didn't seem particularly feasible, came up. And some of the things that had caused staff to consider this to be less feasible are things that the inclusion of Tim Best can address based on his specialization in trails in wildland. So kind of to recap all that, we want the peer review and we want a very traditional review of another professional's work. But in addition, we have asked the subject matter experts, is there anything that maybe FNL didn't see? And that's where this middle ground option discussion came from. Okay, uh, let's see, we haven't heard from Bob yet. So go ahead, Bob. Uh, thanks, a number of points. Um, Jamie, uh, just to be clear, um, I hadn't had any one-on-one -on -one conversations or group conversations about this topic outside of the what Mark talked about uh, either. Um, I had the same reaction that that Gail had, which is, um, and, I, and maybe just take it one step further. Um, did we go back to FNL and ask them to examine this as an option by you know doing another extension on their existing? contract, and then when that was completed, have a peer review of the entire thing. Um, it, what, what was that considered as a, as a possibility? I, I'm, I guess I'd like to give FNL the opportunity to look at it unless we think that there's no way they would consider that, that the only thing they think is that we should be building 14 foot wide benches on, on the mountain, which I'm absolutely not happy about. Um, that, any any reaction on that? Did we did we ask them? Yes, I would cheerfully react to that. Yeah. Um, no, we did not ask them to expand their report to include an option similar to this. However, in the early discussions with FNL while they were developing options, this idea had come up, and FNL had discarded it. And I believe that it had largely been discarded based on the idea that. If we're going to be up there cutting trails anyway, let's use bigger equipment, more efficient equipment. Yes, that's going to require a wider bench, but it's going to be faster and safer to do okay. it that way. All right, so basically we, we think they rejected it. I mean, the reason, um, just to let everybody know, to re recap, Mark and I uh, went on a tour with James and Josh, and I believe we walked about half the um, Evine Trail 
And it's real clear there's a bench there already that's about five to six feet wide um, that was cut in before. And that, that bench had slid out in some areas, but for the most part, it was, it was still there. And I know my reaction was when I saw that is, why don't we just use that bench um, or something similar to it? So if FNL doesn't want to look at that, then okay, I guess we can um, uh, maybe do something different. I, I had a couple other questions, but I, I wanted to get, you know, let Jeff and Jamie get in and then we can come back on, on those. They're not specific on this. Okay, Jamie. Um, I just wanted to sort of, um, in terms of how we think about this discussion as we go forward in public, my one concern is um, I, I'm all for continuing to investigate what may be a preferred option. Um, and, and I agree, um, Chair Mayhood, it sounds like there's there's reasons for us to, to um, consider this, uh, but I, my view of that public outreach process that we had talked about was that we would not have a predetermined um, outcome in mind that we would, you know, bring it to the public and sort of identify here are all of the, you know, the options that we have looked at and the reasons that we may prefer this one, but we want to have a public dialogue before we make a final um, determination. So I guess um, I don't, I, I, I want to be cautious about sounding like we are all making a decision about the preferred alternative at the outset of this process, if it is our goal to have this, you know, um, public outreach process around what the final, um, you know, selection is. Jeff? Yes, I, I think Thinking of public outreach and public meetings and people uh, discussing this uh, that haven't seen it before, I, I cannot imagine that we would not have someone in the audience say, well, why not just bury part of it where it needs to be buried and not bury the other parts? And that's kind of what this middle ground proposal is. And so I think at the very least, we need to be, we'll need to be prepared to address that uh, if we do, uh, if, when we do a public outreach. So to, to me, this makes perfect sense to add this into this project, uh, especially considering what we've heard about uh, how interested the previous consultants weren't in pursuing this. So I, I, I know we're gonna get asked. Uh, Chair, may I correct a couple of misapprehensions yes. that seem to have yes, crept in? Go ahead, Josh. Uh, so initially, the option 3B, the number 12 and number 14 in terms of feet of width has come up several times. Option 3B does not call for a bench of that width. It calls for a bench of approximately eight feet in width with intermittent widening for staging purposes to 12 to 14 feet. Not a huge difference, but I'm an engineer, the numbers matter. Uh, and then, this middle ground option does not propose to put pipe unburied on the mountain. It, it hasn't proposed anything yet. It's still to be evaluated. But the discussion involved portions of the pipe being trenched into a, a narrower bench and other portions being laid on the bench and then covered. The idea being that with HDPE pipe, either you cover it all or you don't cover any because once it starts melting, it's emitting VOCs, and then we have to replace it all anyway. So thank you for indulging me. Okay, Mark? Yes, I have a number of questions um, on the, uh, uh, the, the memo and the proposal from HKA uh, that I'd like to go through first. Um, on page 10 of the agenda, which is Josh's memo, um, the statement at the bottom of the page, HKA will include a review of option one from the report. And um, option one or alternative one uh, in the report is replacement of the pipe in kind, but with the same width of bench that Ferrer and Loretta was uh, proposing for option 3B, that wide wide bench. Eight in most areas, 12 to 14 in others. 
Um, what do we get from HKA reviewing that option one since from the discussions that I believe we've had from what I've heard from Rick and Josh is that doesn't get us anywhere because it's not enough of a reduction in cost. So why have HKA spend further time on that specifically the review of that option one aspects? Josh, would you like to answer the question? Cert certainly. The purpose of having HKA review alternative one or option one from the original study is to look at the assumption that, well, largely to look at the assumption that ethanol made that the wider bench was required in order to put the pipe down. Mm -hmm. If it is possible to do so using a narrower bench, which in the past it was, we don't know currently based on modern OSHA requirements and safety standards that that can be done again, but that needs to be looked at. And that is one of the assumptions of one of the methodologies that would be reviewed. Okay. Um, on page 11 of your memo, Josh, or page 11 of the agenda, your second page of your memo, um, you lay out uh, a number of bullets, five or six in general, uh, that spells out the middle ground option was explored. Uh, but these were, um, this was based on discussions um, with Kucinich and Fox. But I don't see this level of detail, not only in, not in their proposal, but neither in the email exchange between you and them. Am I correct in that? You are correct that this level of detail is not included in any of the documentation. And okay. The reason for that is that John Kasudich went on vacation shortly after we started discussing this. So I wasn't able to get clarification from him in writing okay. or clarification of the conversation that we had had. Okay. Uh, um, I would ask then um, if, if the board elects to go ahead with this, I would like at a minimum a one page letter from HKA um documenting specifically these bullets and what your understanding of the conversation was something signed from them so that it's committing to them or to us uh, making their commitment in writing yes we agree with this yes this is what we're doing and since we now have the the, the time on that not simply the email exchange but just get doesn't need not revise their proposal but simply a letter amending the proposal saying, yes, and we're going to do the following things. I believe we can arrange that without difficulty. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, just a second. Um, looks like Gina is wants to leap in here. Yeah, I, I was just going to suggest that um, the proposed agreement that's in the packet hasn't been signed, so this could easily be added to the scope of work um, of the agreement. Okay. Okay. So um, what, can, can I just clarify what Gina is suggesting? Because when it comes time to make a motion, I just want to make sure that what we what we would be saying then. So so that that we would be um, moving that uh, we direct the district manager, blah blah blah, but but also to include a, a, a one page addendum specifying the work they would do on this middle ground option? Yeah, well, I think that the motion that I would propose, if that's what the board wants to do, would be to uh, authorize the district manager to enter into a contract uh, in, in an amount not to exceed 57875 um, with the scope of services to include um, peer review of uh, of the middle ground option as set forth in the board memo. It's not peer review though, Gina. That's the problem. Is it, it's it, this is their ab initio uh, 
work on this. And, and I think that's what Mark and I, I, I totally agree with Mark that, that when I read this memo and compared it to the paperwork that's there is none of that was specified. And to me, it's the most important thing that they would be doing. Okay, so it's not the peer review, it's actually specifying. Um, it, yes, I think we need to go back to what Josh had, I believe has more than adequately described in writing in his memo and get them to um, essentially parrot that back to us for the middle ground option uh, bullets that he's describing and what they're going to do for that assessment. I don't know how to simply put that in words in this motion. Well, it, I think if the rest of the board agrees that this is something we want to do, then we'll work on that. Maybe Gina can work on it while we finish our discussion. Okay. Because okay. the other Please. thing we need to do on this motion, too, is I noticed that there's there's nothing, or at least I didn't see anything about um, authorizing a single source. Yeah. I've, so it'd be nice I've, to have, Gina, if you could concoct the wording that you would like us to do for that. Yeah, we don't need any specific finding or um, board determination regarding the sole source procurement. Um, under the district's new procurement policy, the district simply needs to document the reasons for the sole source procurement um, in, in the file and uh, the purchase order. Okay, so I, I misunderstood. I thought that we were supposed to that we had to authorize the district manager to do this. And you're saying we don't have to. We don't. The, pri the, the district's prior purchasing rules did require that, but it's no longer required. All right. Okay. okay. Um, Bob, did you want to just comment on this before I go back to Mark, or, or did you have other questions? Um, I have other questions. Okay. I was just going to say let's I had to finish up with language. Mark, and then let's finish up with Mark, and then we'll come back to you, okay? Yeah. Okay, I have one last question. Um, on page 14 of the agenda, um, HKA is asking or um, is saying that they're going to do a rough evaluation of the project cost estimates, but they request the detailed cost breakdown from Alpine Summit. Um, are we able to get that from uh, Fur and Loretta, Josh? I believe so. Uh it's our bloody work project. Product. <laughs> it, it, I mean, come on. We own we own the final report. There's, it could be argued whether or not we own essentially their notes. I don't see an issue. Uh, but if but if HKA doesn't have that detailed cost estimate, then they can't do this rough uh, evaluation of the project cost estimates. Uh, Personally, I don't think they need to. I don't care whether the number is 60 million or whether it's 56.5 or 64.3. It doesn't, it's way high. Bring us back something on this middle ground option of a cost that tells me it's a fifth of that or a fourth of that. And then I have something else to evaluate. Um, so I'll, I'll leave it at that. If we can get the detailed cost, fine. If we don't get the detailed cost, I'm fine with telling HKA, take that out of your costs. Don't do that portion and, and give us a deduct for it. Well, or, or a, a middle ground on that would be that just go ahead and do a, a more superficial assessment of it that doesn't involve you know, digging into the details, because I'm totally with you, that, you know, whether it's 55 or 65 is not the issue. Um, right. What we're looking for is whether there's an alternative that costs 25 or 35, right? So, okay. Yes. Okay, um, that's all of my questions. Thank okay. you. Go ahead, Bob. Yeah, oh. Regretfully, I, I don't think we're going to get down there and with inflation raging and going to rage for a while. By the time we get around to building this, we're looking at 25 to 50 percent above whatever they come back with now. And I think we just need to kind of 
you know, accept that. Uh, hopefully they can get it down to maybe 30, you know, or, or, or 40 or something like that. But it, it's still going to be at that number by the time we get back. Um, I did have a number of questions, one of them following up on what Mark said. You know, just to make sure that we're clear on work product, um, you know, I, I've talked about this before. It's really important that everything that they do is our work product. So if what, if what we're doing here is distinguishing between the final report being our work product and the numbers behind that or the spreadsheets behind it or the analysis behind it not being our work product, I, I, I'm not happy with that either. Um, I, I think it's all our work. This is work for hire. Now, if there's some proprietary um, information or uh, method or tool or whatever they're using, that, that would be a different thing, but that should be called out. Uh, at least that's typically the way I do it with work for hire uh, contracts that I use in software engineering. Um, you know, we own everything, source code, et cetera, et cetera. And that's the underlying numbers we're talking about here. Um, I had a couple of questions on the contract. Do we have any sense of how much is sort of peer review and how much is investigating this new ground out of the 57,000 more or less? Is it about half and half? If I were to have to put numbers on it, I would think it would be more along the lines of 60-40, 60% peer review, 40% middle ground option, possibly as much as 65-35. Did um, HKA uh, bid on the original report that I hear that they did? They were part of the team led by Sandus, which bid on the original constructability study. Okay, and we, and we did not choose them uh, due to cost. I'm assuming. Correct. So the cost of F and L plus this cost, well, we probably still would have done it. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, let's see. The next one here on this is sort of finance and contract related stuff. I'm trying to figure out is this a not to exceed number to accomplish all of the tasks, or is this a best estimate to accomplish all the tasks? And it could be more, but if it is more, they'll tell us before we, and ask for our approval. It wasn't it clear is, which way it was. It is a not to exceed without prior written authorization. But but does that mean that they will accomplish 100% of the task for the not to exceed? That is the expectation. Okay, but not a guarantee. Have you ever that gotten is, a this guarantee out of me? That, that is, this is not an FFL, firm fixed price, excuse me, FFP, firm fixed price. Correct. Not to exceed. Okay. So if you get 90%, we want them to finish, but we're going over, then we'll have to pay them more. Correct. Okay. Um, I already talked about the work product belonging to us. Um, oh, on the insurance, um, just FYI, a lot of insurance norms nowadays are 2 million for the general liability uh, coverage, um, especially with inflation happening. Um, just FYI. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, um, let's see if there's any uh, comments by members of the public, and then we'll come back and see if there's any more comments by the board. Uh, April, go ahead. There we go. There Hi. We go. I'm April, I'm a member of the Friends of San Lorenzo Valley Water, and I also was interested in item E on their memo saying that they needed the detailed breakdown, and I might be wrong because I don't go to every single meeting, but what I recall from their presentation, them saying something like they didn't have a detailed cost breakdown in terms of being able to say what each particular mile say of pipeline would cost but they just had kind of like some rough numbers so i'm not sure we're going to get the detailed uh breakdown that um hka wants that's what i had to say about that but thank you for considering alternatives i think that's important okay thank you did uh anybody want to respond to april rick or josh well, we'll see what we can, you know, what we can get um, from uh, FNL and, and and do our best um, at getting prices. Uh, but if we can't get them, it won't be the end of the world, uh, like Mark said. You know, we'll, we'll move ahead. Okay. Um, 
How about any other comments by members of the board on this or questions? Um, if not, is, it, is anybody ready to uh, make a motion? Mark? Go ahead. I was going to say, go ahead, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I can do that. So, um, Gina, did you? Gina. Looks like Gina may be willing to bail us all out. Uh, well, no, oh. I actually have some language that I wrote down. Let me okay. let me throw it out and see what we think. All right. um, I make a motion that the board authorize the district manager to enter into a contract with Harrow Kucinich and Associates to provide a peer review of the report in the amount not to exceed $57,875 with a scope of services to include evaluation of the middle ground option in the district engineer memo. I like that. I will second that. Okay. I'll second that. Okay, uh, Gina, did you have anything that you wanted to add or modify on that? No, thank you. I was going to try to suggest a simple approach and Bob did it beautifully. Okay, great. All right. Good um, any any uh, further discussion now that we have a motion in front of us? Uh, seeing none, how about members of the public? Nope. Okay, Holly, would you like to take a roll call vote? President Mayhood. Aye. Vice President Ackerman. Yes. Director Fulz. Yes. Director Hill. Yes. Director Smalley. Yes. Okay, the motion passes unanimously. Um, next, we have the investment policy and treasurer designation. I'm gonna turn these over to district council. Okay, thank you, Rick. And um, I, I will keep this one brief. Um, I, I regret doing this while the Director of Finance is on leave, but it's a fairly ministerial issue that arises from uh, state law and the district's investment policy that was overhauled last year. So what you have in front of you is a resolution that um, essentially readopts the district's investment policy, which like I said, it got a thorough staff and legal review just a year ago and was updated by the board. Um, I quickly checked the applicable codes to make sure there haven't been any changes since we did this. There haven't been, and therefore I don't see uh, on my end a, a legal need to, to really revisit the policy again. But the uh, the law that pertains to investments being made by an agency such as the district does require that, that the dis well, it requires that if the board of directors wants to appoint a treasurer to invest and reinvest funds of the district, that that delegation of authority is supposed to be made each year. And uh, based on our resolution last year in the board policy manual, this comes up in uh, it's supposed to come up in June. And, and so that's why it's on the agenda tonight. Um, so the only requested action by the board is to adopt the attached, is to by motion adopt the resolution that's presented in your board packet. Uh, and like I said, that resolution effectuates a reappointment of the district's lead financial officer, i.e. the director of finance and business services as the district's treasurer and uh, essentially ratifies and readopts the existing investment policy. So as uh, chair of budget and finance, I'll just say this is largely a housekeeping thing. And so I don't really have any questions, but um, Jeff, you're on that committee. Did you want to make any comments? I agree with you. This is housekeeping for legal purposes, and I don't see an issue with it. Okay. Uh, um, Mark? Yes. Um, on page 59 of the agenda, uh, we see um, this section performance standards. Um, and I'm interpreting that to be we're supposed to look at how we did last year as compared to some uh, indices. Um, district manager, how did we do last year? Since you're the one that's called out in that. Rick, you're muted. 
That's a good question. I don't have that answer for you tonight, Mark, but I will get it for you all. Uh, I'll have that answer uh, for you um, at the next okay. meeting. Okay. And um, in, in, in addition to that, um, what are the approximate uh, dollar values of the funds that we have invested in these um, in these amounts? And then which investment funds are we invested in? I don't believe the, that. I'll have the to three questions I had. Yeah, I will get back to you with those exact. Okay. We don't have, uh, you know, I think our, our money is basically always invested in with the County of Santa Cruz. I don't believe that we have uh, okay. you know, treasury bills and, and so forth, but I will get back to you. This, you know, at one time, the district did have several investments uh, in Morgan Stanley. I won't go back to the gory details of, of the past, uh, but I will get you uh, an update. Okay. All right. Um, Thank you. Uh, Bob? I will just say that in the past, when we weren't investing uh, through the county, it was a complete cluster. And so the um, changes that were made in the investment uh, policy and position that the board took uh, really cleaned a lot of that up. And uh, I, as long as we remain invested in the county, we, we don't have a lot of risk. It's basically the excess money uh, from the loans, right, that haven't been, uh, you know, in, uh, expended yet. So maximum of 30 million, more or less, um, plus the reserves, um, but we've probably spent some of that down, so 20. Okay. Okay, thanks, Bob. Um, and just to confirm, uh, Gina, no changes at all from last year. I didn't see any red lines, so. That's correct. There are no changes. Perfect. I, we did, I think, a really great up overhaul on it, and um, I'm support this. I would just add to what Bob said that um, the fact that we have it invested with the county uh, investment pool sort of answers your question, Mark, about, you know, the yields. We're, we're not trying to, you know, time the market or anything. You know, it's very low, but it's safe. And so, you know, the in the past, we maybe had to ask the district manager um, when we were doing other kinds of investments, whether the yields were great or not but this is kind of it is what it is <laughs> or the losses were great as in the case may be <laughs> jamie um i was just going to suggest um and i don't know how you know it sounds like we may not have a huge um you know investment portfolio um but but I was going to say that, you know, I've been in organizations where um, we had, you know, some kind of a representative from the organization we were invested with come and just give us sort of a, you know, overview of our positions. And, you know, if that was an option for us, I, I would love to um, add that to a future agenda if, um, but I, it sounds like our, all of our investment is with the, through the county. So that's probably not an option. Well, the auditor controller may come out. Uh, they have in the past for other organizations, and you know the bulk of our money, and it is for our district, is substantial because um, uh, all of our loan money was paid uh, uh, forward at first, and we're paying uh, for projects out of that loan money, and that money is all in the, the county of Santa Cruz. So I, I, we can check on that uh, to see if uh, I think it's what Edith Driscoll, uh, I do believe, is uh, the auditor controller and. She is an elected official, and I, she would probably be more than happy to come out. Jeff. We will check. I was just going to say that I was in the committee meeting last year when we reviewed this, and um, it's my recollection that we had almost the bulk of the money in the Santa Cruz County pool, but I think we also had some in the local agency investment fund. Uh, I was, I don't recall any non-pooled investments. So uh, that's going to guarantee us a fairly middle of the road rate of return, but a very, a very good security. Okay. Um, are there, let's see if there's any questions or comments from members of the public. Um, I don't see any hands raised there. 
Um, would anyone like to make a motion? Um, I would move it if Jeff's not. I'm not sure if Jeff is. Okay, I, I, let, I'll do it then. Um, that, um, that I move that we adopt the uh, attached resolution um, regarding readoption of the San Lorenzo Valley Water District Investment Policy um, and renew the delegation of investment and depository authority to the district's treasurer for fiscal year 2022-23. I'll second that. Okay. Any further comments, questions? If not, Holly, would you like to take a roll call vote? President Mayhood? Aye. Vice President Ackerman? Yes. Director Fultz? Yes. Director Hill? Yes. Director Smalley? Yes. Okay, motion passes. Um, now we come to the personnel system uh, policy. Gina, did you want to talk about this one? Uh, I saw Rick's hand up. Did you? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Rick. Before I... Yeah, as we sat there and talked, page 145 of your agenda has all of our uh, accounts and how much we have uh, and where. Uh, Great. So as we sat there, as I sat there and struggled, I could have went right through it. I'm, okay, uh, 145. Page 145 has a breakdown of our accounts. Uh, right. I'll go look at that. Thank you, Rick. Just to let you all know. Uh, so then I guess I'll dive into the personnel system policy. Uh, thank you for bearing with me with uh, an evening of legal housekeeping. Um, this is another item that uh, typically is subjected to an annual review. Um, with the last changes to the board policy manual, the board policy manual now calls for its review in June of each year, uh, and therefore we have it before you tonight. Um, the tracked changes that you find in attachment A to the board memo um, are all changes that were made for legal reasons to essentially to make sure that the policy is complying with applicable law, particularly in the areas of conducting background checks, administering leave policies, and the use of um, criminal history and making hiring decisions. Um, these are all issues that were pointed out when Nassiman's employment team, who knows these issues better than I do, took a look at the policy and suggested that it contain these issues. Um, I, I have spoken a while ago to the district HR specialist and with Rick, and I don't have any reason to believe that the district is not in compliance with these laws now. The purposes of the changes are simply to make sure that if anybody looks to this policy as a roadmap for making hiring decisions as they should be able to do that um, you know some of the guardrails are laid out clearly in the policy um, there is a you may have noticed that you were sent an email and there is on the website a revised clean version of the policy that's intended to be exhibit a to the resolution um, we cleaned up some formatting problems that hadn't been taken care of in the version that's in the board packet, but there is a clean version on the website. And I did receive a couple of um, edits from one of the board members um, to that clean version that I uh, would be happy to share with you before we get to the approval stage. Um, but uh, you know, I don't wanna prejudge that this is going to be readopted by the board. And so I'll save those, those comments for uh, the end of the discussion. Okay. Um, are there any um, comments by members of the board on this? Jamie? I have a really minor one. Why do we call it the personnel system policies? <laughs> it just seemed like a strange title to me. It seems like a personal policy manual. Well, and I'm, I'm, let me say that I think that title is kind of inherited, but if so, I'm speculating a little bit to say why it's called that. But I think it's because the district operates pursuant to civil service rules, and so this is more than just a personnel policy. It's it's a policy that's um, sort of implementing a a civil service um, program for the district. 
I'm agnostic to the term. I just was curious because it seemed unusual to me, but thanks, that's it. Bob? You're muted, Bob. My apologies. So I had a number of questions on this and, and following up on Jamie's. Um, is it required to use the term personnel? I mean, kind of so 80s or 90s, um, you know, we, we refer to that as human resources or human capital or, or something. It, it just, it, it sounds, I mean, our employees are very important to the operation of the district and personnel is kind of a old term. Um, I, I can't think of any reason why the term personnel is required. Uh, you know, I think the, the policy could be called virtually anything as long as we update cross references to right. it okay. at Great. applicable times and places. Great, thank you. Um, okay, so a number of questions that, that arose from this, and some of them maybe we'll cover later, but um, I noticed in the resolution that it was very different from the one that was attached from, was it 1999 or 2000, in terms of defining um, certain uh, positions. Um, are those defined anywhere? The, um, was it a competitive, uh, competitive service? I, I like the fact that they were defined in the previous resolution. And I, was, I wasn't sure I saw them in the current one. Uh could you point me to, to what you're looking at? Are you looking at Ordinance 99 from yeah, 2000? Exactly. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah, there's a section in here. I mean, there's a bunch of things in there that I think have already been subsumed into the um, personnel policy, but the listing of competitive service, it sort of goes through what that is, and I didn't see that in the new policy, though maybe I missed it. Well, and to clarify, the, the personnel system policy doesn't um, supersede or replace anything in Ordinance 99. Ordinance 99 is what makes oh. the district subject to, um, to statewide competitive service selection requirements. Oh, and so then, the, sorry, the, the current resolution doesn't um, sort of void that. That's right. There's kind of a hierarchy of authority here. It starts with state law, and then there's Ordinance 99, which makes the district subject to competitive service requirements for certain positions. Then there's the personnel system or personnel system policy that creates um, sort of the, the framework for how the district uh, administers its personnel system. And then you have the MOUs that actually contain the negotiated for um, conditions of employment with the employees. Okay, so really, all of all of those as a package are what we would put on the website in terms of explaining to the community what this is all about relative to how we manage our human resources. Correct. You would have to look at all of those things together to understand how employment works at the district. Um, just a couple of quick points on reemployment and reinstatement. Um, I was just curious, do either of those then result in a in a continuation of continuous service? So in other words, i don't I don't sort of have to start all over again. If you could bear with me for a uh, moment, I believe uh, all that is spelled out, though exactly where I don't recall off the top yeah, of there's my a, head. Yeah, there's a definition on page 11. Well, it's something I can take offline with you then, um, Gina, so I'll do that. Okay. Let's see. Oh, and on the background check, um, you know, in, in, in my world, we have a very comprehensive set of background checks that include credit, criminal education background, work history, and social media. Um, uh, it, do, do we perform that same comprehensive or are we limited to um, criminal checks only? Nothing in the uh, personnel system policy limits what types of checks the district can perform, except to require that if they're performed, they're done in accordance with the applicable laws. So um, nothing in here speaks to what the district either does or should. Or could do. Or could do. Great. Um, all right, that's it. Thank you.
Okay, Mark. Uh, since nobody else has asked it, I have to ask. Um, I see a spelling error. I'm going to have to bring up uh, on page 7080 of the agenda, uh, section 6.5, line number eight in that section, offerees. Yeah, we caught that one already. Thank you. Okay. And I got it. Okay. Uh, maybe There's another one in there if you look real close. Uh, maybe at this time, Gina, did you want to um, pipe up with the changes that one of the board members suggested? And uh... Sure, yes. Um, Director Hill had sent an email requesting that we correct <laughs> the spelling of offeree in section 6.5 and also pointed out that in um, trying to get there right now, in section 6.2, subsection three, uh, the word form should be from. And so those typo corrections um, we can make to the final version uh, of the policy, uh, you know, presuming that the board uh, adopts the attached resolution. Okay. Um, Bob, you had your hand up? Or again, or that was just legacy lowering it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Any other questions by members of the board? If not, we'll go out to those really hanging in there. Um, to members of the public, <laughs> hanging. This is pretty dry stuff. So you are to be congratulated. Anybody want to comment on that? <laughs> Seeing none. Okay. Um, as I see it, it looks like um, that the board would move uh, that the personnel system policy attached here to as Exhibit A is hereby adopted and Exhibit A shall take effect immediately superseding and replacing all prior versions of the policy and shall remain in effect until superseded by further resolution of the board. And if I, if I may make one clarification, it, it is just important that the motion uh, be clear that you're adopting the resolution in the okay, and, okay, sorry, that we're adopting the resolution that does what I just said. I'll second that. Any comments or questions? Okay, Holly, go ahead and take a roll call vote, please. President Mayhood? Aye. Vice President Ackerman? Yes. Director Fulz? Yes. Director Hill? Yes. Director Smalley? Yes. Okay. Passes unanimously. Next, we come to the consent agenda. Um, would anybody like to pull any item off of the consent agenda? Uh, hearing none, uh, let's see, do I let the public weigh in on this as well? I can never remember. Uh, yes, Chair Mayhead, according to the board policy manual, okay. a member of the public can't pull an item. Does so the public wants want to pull anything off the consent agenda? Raise your hand. Otherwise, uh, without objection, it will be adopted. Um, next, we come to the district manager report, and I hear from Rick that he has two brief uh, announcements. A couple, a couple quick items. It just, it, we're happy to report that the admin uh, committee did their final review of the RFP for outreach uh, at their admin committee meeting, and staff will be publishing and, and moving that out uh, to uh, obtain uh, proposals for outreach. We're looking forward to that. The Fall Creek Fish Ladder uh, construction, we have started with uh, fish relocation. Um, so we're just getting started um, moving ahead uh, for the Fall Creek Fish Ladder um, upgrades. And then the last minor, uh, uh, we just completed the 2022 uh, mainline flushing program for this year. Um, that was a, a district wide, predominantly the Ben Loman, Lumpico, and Scotts Valley areas. Okay. Bob? I, I did have a question, and my apologies if I missed this, but have we actually started digging in the ground for the Quail Hollow Pipeline? Yes. Have we? Thank you. 
All right. Um, next, we come to uh, department status reports. Are there any questions or comments on the department status reports? I don't see any from the board. How about from members of the public? None? Okay. And we did have one uh, written communication, um, which was a uh, compliment by Amanda de Jesus about uh, treatment of by staff that came out to her house to help with a leak. Um, we always like to hear good things. Anybody else want to comment on this written communication? Bob? Not in the written communication, but can I rewind a little bit on, on the report? Sorry, I had one comment on this. Oh, I'm sorry. Go go ahead. No problem. It was my fault. I, I was looking, no, no, scanning no, through. Right. <laughs> um, now, on the uh, finance report, I noticed that we are um, through now, I guess, the end of April, we're at 1.3 million in operating margin. And, you know, our forecast was we're going to be around 3 million. So it, it's highly unlikely at this point we're going to um, make that 3 million. So I I don't want to know what where we are with maybe this is a budget committee question, but where where are we with that? Um, you know, the end of the year is coming up very soon, and we're going to be way short of the number we need to sustain our capital improvement projects and not kick things down down the road. Rick, did you want to address that? We will uh, bring that to the July. Uh, finance committee uh, Kendra I do believe will be back for for that meeting and that is uh, uh, will uh, will be on that agenda because um, that's been an ongoing question and concern and then that will come to the board after that then? sure Great. thank you that that meeting's fairly early in July we're, so we're going to re we're probably going to reschedule it it's the 5th of July and we're going to reach out and find what uh, a good day that everybody makes. So uh, we'll double check with Kendra. But, but uh, still uh, early, so yeah, the too early in the month to bring so it turn. back to the board in in July. Great, thank you. Okay, any other uh, department status reports, committee reports, anything else? All right, it was written communication, and if there's no comments on that, then I think we've. Uh, oh, Holly, yes. I was just going to call out the two members of the staff that were um, oh, involved you. in that. So it was um, uh, Mr. Davis and Mr. Beasley that were that went out and got that compliment from uh, Sister Jesus. Thank you, thank you for doing that. Yeah, definitely. All right. Okay. Well, um, then we are to that blessed moment uh, without objection. We, uh, Jamie, are you jumping in? I just wanted to say, could you know send our congratulations to Kendra on her new baby? Ah, yes, yes, yes. hooray! <laughs> doing great. It sounds like they're doing well. The fact that she's she's she'll be back to meet with us in July. That's great. I know. Okay, so we are hereby adjourned. Good night, all.